This might be the easiest way to remove the background of an image using one of Photopea's most useful tools. Let's take a look at how to remove the background of two images using the background eraser. One image where the background eraser works perfectly, and another that's a little more difficult to isolate. But make sure to stick around till the end, because I'll show you a method you can use to make this tool even more powerful than it already is. You can find links to download all of the images I'm using in the description, or you can get the finished project files on my Patreon page, which is also in the description. In our first example, we want to remove the table and leave everything else. Select the background eraser tool by clicking and holding on the eraser icon, and select background eraser, or just press shift E until it's activated. One downside to the background eraser is that it's destructive, which means the pixels erased can't be brought back like they can using other methods. There is a way around this, but we'll talk about that later. For now, just to be safe, let's duplicate the layer to be sure we won't lose anything if we make a mistake. The way the background eraser works is by taking a color sample at the center of the cursor on the crosshairs whenever you click and drag. Any pixels within the circle that match the color sampled will be removed. So if I click and drag around the edge of this bowl, the background colors are sampled and removed, but the bowl is not erased. There are three modes you can choose from which affect the way the tool samples colors. Continuous, which is the default and what we're using now, will keep sampling pixels as you drag the cursor, removing any colors within the circle that the crosshairs come into contact with. If I drag from the table into the bowl, once the crosshairs come into contact with a new color, they start to be erased as well. We could set the mode to once, which only samples the colors touching the crosshair when you first click, and won't sample any new colors as you drag. If we do the same as before, and drag from the table into the bowl, now the bowl isn't erased, because only the colors from the table have been sampled. This is really useful if all of the background is the same color, or similar in color. But watch what happens if I keep dragging around without taking a new sample. Once we're far enough away from the sample point, the colors changed, and it's no longer erasing. I usually use continuous, but the once mode does cause you to let off the mouse more often, and click to take a new sample. This is a good practice when using this tool in any mode, because when you go too far and erase something you didn't want to, the only way to get it back is by pressing Ctrl Z to undo it. If I erase a large area of the background, and then make a mistake, pressing Ctrl Z once undoes all that work. If I let off the mouse and take samples more often, I lose less work when I need to go back. The last mode is background, which lets you erase pixels that match your background color. I'll finish erasing around the edge of the bowl, except for this part. Let's zoom in here. If we try to go through, it thinks we want to erase these leaves as well, and I want to keep them in the image. Let's hit Ctrl Z to undo. When this happens, you need to adjust the tolerance to allow less color through the eraser. The tolerance determines how much color is removed based on the sample point, and the higher it is, the more similar shades of color will be erased. The lower it is, and the fewer shades will be erased. Tolerance is a value between 0 and 255. If you set the tolerance to its max value, it will erase all colors inside the circle, just like the eraser would do. But as you lower it, the background eraser will affect fewer shades of color. If we set it to zero, it will only match the exact shade of color we selected, and won't erase any other pixels. Start out with your tolerance set around 50 or 60, and then increase or decrease as you erase the background. If too much is being erased, set the tolerance lower, and if not enough shades are being erased, set the tolerance to a higher value. I'll set it to 20, so we can erase the table without affecting the leaves. I'll start clicking around to erase. And here it happens again. The background eraser has cut into the subject because the tolerance is too high for this section of the image. You might think to turn it down to 2 or 3, but now it's not quite erasing enough. I'll bump the tolerance up to about 10 and continue to erase. To get good results using the background eraser, you need to move the tolerance up or down, depending on what best suits your image. Once you have the edges done, you can press Shift E twice to get back to the eraser tool, and just erase out anything we didn't get so far. 
In our next example, we're going to look at how the contiguous setting affects the background eraser. First, let me set my brush size to around 850, so it's large enough to cover the text. When contiguous is checked, the background eraser will only erase pixels that are directly connected to the pixels touching the sample point. If I click here, only the white outside of the border is being erased, and the white text is not erased because these pixels are not directly touching the pixels I sampled from. If I were to click just the O, the pixels inside were erased, but not the white outside of the border, since they aren't connected. If I uncheck contiguous and click outside of the text, it erases all the white pixels inside the circle, even if they're not directly touching each other. Last, let's take a look at how well the background eraser works on a more complicated example. As always, duplicate the layer and hide the original layer. I'll make the brush smaller. And let's lower the tolerance to 10, so we aren't erasing as much. And I'll recheck contiguous. Just start working your way around the edges of the subject, getting as close as you can. Notice some of the edges back here are jagged and don't look as smooth as I'd like them to. Don't worry about that, I'll show you how you can fix them later. For now, just keep working your way around the subject and erase a path around them. Once you've erased the background from the edges of the subject, press Shift E until you activate the eraser and quickly erase the rest of the image. Alright, it doesn't look too bad, but these edges are too jagged and I'd like to smooth them out. The problem is, with the background eraser, we're working destructively and we can't just unhide the pixels we erased. They're gone forever. That's why it's good to save the original layer because now we can use this method to make the background eraser even more powerful, turning it into a non-destructive tool. To do that, we need to create a selection from our layer where we removed the background. Just hold down control and click on the layer and a selection will be made of our subject. Unhide the original image. With the original image's layer selected, click on the Add Raster Mask button. Now you can delete the layer we used the background eraser on. Click on the mask to select it, so we can edit it, and press B to select the brush tool. Right click and I'll make the brush smaller and I'll lower the hardness of the brush so the edges won't be so sharp. Just paint on the mask with white to reveal the pixels that were hidden. Follow along as close as you can and soften the edge. I'll press X to switch my background and foreground colors and paint black on the mask layer to hide some of the pixels where I went too far. Just go back and forth painting black and white on the mask to soften these edges until they look nice. Once I zoom out, you can see it looks a lot better. It's much more natural along the edges now that it isn't so sharp. And we've made our results non-destructive even though we've used a destructive tool, which allows us to fix any errors we might have made. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.